As much as Biden's team desperately wants to shut down the conversation about replacing him, calls for him to step aside are only going to to continue to grow and get even louder, especially now that we're getting more post-debate polls. And let me tell you, these polls spell disaster for Joe Biden. Now, one of the main arguments that his team has been making thus far is that potential replacements like Harris, Newsom, or Whitmer, they're all polling worse than Biden. So if you replace him with one of them, then Democrats will actually fare worse against Trump in November. And that's a fair argument to make with the data that they have. Now, another argument that they're making is pretty interesting because they're saying, you know, it's not like the debate was that disastrous because our own internal polling shows that we're still losing. So we were losing before the debate, we're still losing afterwards, so the debate must have not had that big of an impact. I'm not joking about this. As New York Magazine's Olivia Nuzzi explains via Twitter, quote, the Biden campaign is releasing information about their internal polling post debate, which shows Biden losing as a means of arguing that the debate didn't hurt him too much since he was also losing before the debate. She adds an unorthodox strategy, to say the least. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, if that's your best argument, then it really demonstrates how unserious you are about beating Trump. At this point, you're only in this for your own ego. So that's kind of the two main arguments arguments that his team is making. Look, other candidates poll worse, and also our polling didn't change that much. But things are changing now. So a post-debate poll from CNN finds that Kamala Harris is officially faring better against Donald Trump than Joe Biden in a hypothetical matchup. Now, it's still an uphill battle for her, but this poll lends credence to the widespread assumption that replacing Biden gives Democrats a better shot against Trump in November. Now, this is a very big deal because it's undercutting the Biden team's core argument here. So this is significant. Now, it gets so much worse for Biden because post-debate internal polling from the Democratic Party leaked, and it is so bad that this poll indicates that if Biden stays in the race, we're looking at the prospect of a Trump landslide in November. So I'm going to read you the first paragraph from Puck News. They got the report, they got the scoop, and they kind of summarized the poll's findings, and it's pretty bleak. Quote, a confidential polling memo circulating among anxious Democrats is confirming some of their worst fears. President Joe Biden's support has started to tumble in key electoral battlegrounds in the wake of his disastrous debate performance in Atlanta, and Biden's diminished standing is now putting pre previously non-competitive states like New Hampshire, Virginia, and New Mexico in play for Donald Trump. What's more, Biden has taken such a reputational hit that he is polling behind other alternative Democratic candidates, including Kamala Harris and Gretchen Whitmer in hypothetical one-on-one -on -one matchups against Trump. So here's the graph. Let's first look at Biden's pre- and post-debate numbers. So if you look at the middle column titled pre-debate margin, you can see that he was behind Donald Trump in every single swing state. Now, when you move to the post-debate column on the left, you see that he is hemorrhaging support even more in swing states that he was already losing. Like, this is disastrous. He is truly in free fall since this debate. Now, on top of that, he's also been damaged in states that he was leading in, and he's polling within the margin of error in Colorado. So this is really the worst case scenario for Biden. But the silver lining, if we go to graph two, is that other Democrats aren't doing as poorly. This poll confirms CNN's findings that Harris is slightly stronger against Trump than Biden, Newsom polls even better, and Whitmer and Buttigieg are particularly strong against Donald Trump. Now, they also struggle in certain states. That's true. But keep in mind that this poll was conducted before they've even been able to make their case or campaign at all. So this is a really big deal. Now, I just want to be clear. I'm not saying that replacing Biden isn't risky because of course it is. And whoever Democrats replace him with, if that happens, could still lose to Donald Trump. So either way, you're rolling the dice. You don't know what's going to happen because nobody has a crystal ball except Kyle Kalinske. But polls confirm that it is so much more risky to keep rolling with Biden after that debate. And to be clear, it wasn't just one bad debate. People were already concerned about his cognitive ability. But that debate demonstrated how bad he's gotten. Now, what's really interesting is how Republicans are responding because they're actually concerned about the prospect of Democrats replacing Biden because they also think that would improve the Democratic Party's chances of winning in November. Fox News reports, quote, as questions continue to mount about President Biden's fitness for office, some House Republicans are privately concerned that replacing him at the top of the ticket 
ticket could result in the GOP losing the White House in November. With a potentially younger and more popular replacement, the GOP lawmakers said, it became a tougher race. It changes everything. It's just a completely unknown wild card right now, the GOP lawmakers said. Now, the article goes on to explain that Republicans are worried that a new candidate could energize the Democratic Party's base and increase turnout, which would be bad for Donald Trump. Now, it's frustrating to me to know that Republicans seemingly understand what Democrats need to do to win more than Democrats. It's always about turnout. It's always about energizing your base. Why can't Democrats understand that? Now, you may be thinking, well, you know, we're Republicans, they're fundamentally dishonest. So maybe they're trying to plant this article to go Democrats into doing something really stupid, like replacing Biden because they're playing 40 chess and they think this will actually help Trump. And if that were true, they wouldn't be trying to literally keep Biden on the ballot so Democrats are stuck with him. In fact, the Heritage Foundation, the leading organization behind Project 2025, is going to mount legal challenges against Democrats in three swing states to try to force Democrats to keep Biden on the ballot. Why? Because they know that Trump has the best chance of winning against Joe Biden. And if the DNC really does move up his nomination in order to lock him in place, they are effectively doing the Republican Party's bidding for them. Now, I think that these polls, they have to be a wake-up call for a lot of elected Democrats. I don't necessarily know if they're a wake-up call per se. I think it just confirms what they're already saying or what they're already thinking but won't say publicly, right? But most of them, they're probably not going to say anything publicly until they see even more polls confirming that an alternative would indeed do better against Donald Trump. But if we get even more evidence that Biden is weak to Trump, more polls come out showing the same thing they will have an obligation to call on Biden to drop out if they actually care about saving democracy. Now, some Democrats, they've already had enough. They've seen enough and they've come to the conclusion that this can no longer go on. Now, I say this because the first elected Democrat, Lloyd Doggett of Texas, has publicly called on Biden to drop out. Per Politico, he says, quote, instead of reassuring voters, the president failed to effectively defend his many accomplishments and expose Trump's many lies during the debate. Too much is at stake to risk a Trump victory. President Biden saved our democracy by delivering us from Trump in 2020. He must not deliver us to Trump in 2024. He continues, I am hopeful that he will make the painful and difficult decision to withdraw. I respectfully call on him to do so. Now, it's just one Democrat, but that's a really big deal. The real question now is what whether or not this is going to start a trend. Will there be a domino effect? Sometimes it just takes one person to speak up and then other people find the courage to do the same. How many Democrats, though, are willing to do what Lloyd Doggett is doing? How many of them are willing to put their necks on the line and call on Biden to drop out publicly? You know, I would hope that most would since democracy is at stake, but we're dealing with self-serving politicians who know that doing this could blow up in their faces if they publicly call on Biden to withdraw and he doesn't. You don't want to get on the bad side of a potential president or the leader of the Democratic Party because that could spell doom for your career if you have higher ambitions. So they don't want to make the wrong calculation here. But what matters more, your career or democracy? Like this is an actual question that they have to grapple with. But aside from elected Democrats, there are prominent people within Democratic Party circles that are saying enough is enough. And they're saying that publicly. For example, former Obama HUD Secretary Julian Castro has called on Biden to withdraw. This is huge. Also, Democratic strategist James Carville is calling on Biden to withdraw. I don't personally care what James Carville has to say, but a lot of Democrats for some reason still respect him. And right here, he's correct. So credit to him. So this is a big deal. Former House Democrat Tim Ryan wrote an op-ed in Newsweek calling on Democrats to replace Biden with Harris. Former DNC Vice Chair R.T. Ryback is calling on Biden to be pushed to drop out and even says that elected Democrats privately already want him to withdraw, but they don't want to say that publicly because they fear retribution. Also, Democratic Senator Peter Walsh, he's not explicitly saying that Biden should withdraw, but he is criticizing Biden's team's dismissive response to people that are concerned about his chances, and he condemned their use of the term bedwetting because it just kind of seems like they're not taking the threat of Trump seriously. As for Nancy Pelosi, she's not calling on Biden to withdraw either, but she did tell MSNBC sees Andrea Mitchell, quote, I think it's a legitimate question to say, is this an episode or is this a condition, which is so significant coming from her. So it kind of feels like the dam is about to burst where you have people who aren't necessarily ready to call on him to withdraw saying, 
yeah, there are legitimate concerns here. Now, there's also James Clyburn, who has been probably one of the most, if not the most dishonest Democrats when it comes to this conversation. He initially claimed on MSNBC that Biden's bad debate performance was due to his stutter, which is such bullshit. And it's honestly insulting that he thinks his own base is stupid enough to believe that lie. But even he is now starting to change his tune a little bit because the conversation, like this talk, it's not going to go away because people are genuinely concerned that sticking with Biden could lead to a Trump victory. Now, James Clyburn, I want to share a clip from MSNBC because he's asked about the prospect of Biden being replaced and Kamala Harris being circumvented. Now, pay close attention to what he says here, because what he says, even though it seems inconspicuous and innocuous, it's really significant. How would you feel if they worked around and tried to go around Kamala Harris because of her lack of high poll numbers and popularity and broadly based? Uh, do you think it's hers to have if it is not his? I will support her uh, if he were to step aside. Uh, but I want to support her going forward uh, at some time in the, in the future. I want this ticket to continue to be Biden-Harris. And then uh, we'll see what happens uh, after the next election. No, this party should not in any way do anything to work around uh, Ms. Harris. We should do everything we can to bolster uh, her, whether it's in second place or at the top of the ticket. So he's pretty clear about the fact that he doesn't think Biden should withdraw. But having said that, though, if Biden did hypothetically choose to withdraw and Kamala Harris suddenly became the new nominee, he would fall in line and support her. And here's the thing that goes without saying all Democrats would fall in line and support the Democratic Party nominee. They would support whoever was at the top of the ticket because that's what elected Democrats are going to do. But I think that in terms of who should replace Biden, just personally speaking, Kamala Harris does make the most sense from a small D Democratic perspective because she already won an election. She clinched the nomination with Joe Biden, she's already on the ticket. So her being elevated to the top of the ticket just kind of feels like the natural progression, even though she's not my first choice. You know, it would just feel gross to me and undemocratic if party leaders chose to dispose of her behind closed doors for someone else when voters already casted millions of votes for her. And I say that even acknowledging the fact that the Democratic Party didn't even hold a real primary process this time. You know, states like Florida straight up just canceled their primaries. So they didn't actually give voters a real option. But still, the point that she's the logical Democratic choice is inarguable. I think that pairing her with a really strong, likable VP like Whitmer or Andy Bashir would be really, really important and necessary. But I do think that elevating Harris is really the only fair choice. We're all K-Hive in 2024, baby. But here's one problem with all of this. Biden's inner circle is shielding him from all of this really important information that we're all now privy to. And I say this because a new report in Politico discusses how Democrats are growing increasingly frustrated with Biden's inner circle because of how insular they are. Quote, inside the White House, Biden's growing limitations were becoming apparent long before his meltdown in last week's debate, with the senior team's management of the president growing more strictly controlled as his term has gone on. During meetings with aides who are putting together formal briefings they'll deliver to Biden, some senior officials have at times gone to great lengths to curate the information being presented in an effort to avoid provoking a negative reaction. And they go on to say that Biden can be unpleasant, so they're disinclined to show him something that might make him mad. So there's really an open question. Are they even going to show him the negative polling? Is he even going to be challenged by anyone in his inner circle at this point since they've already decided that he should keep running? It just feels like that's increasingly unlikely, which is really dangerous. You know, especially now that we know that there's this effort from his family like Jill and Hunter Biden to glaze him up. I just don't know that he's even going to get this information. And MSNBC reports that Hunter Biden in particular has stayed really close to the president, which kind of tells me that he's trying to ice out anyone who might relay any of this damaging information to Biden. Breaking news. We're now learning that Hunter Biden is attending some of the president's meetings at the White House, staying close to his father post-debate. NBC's Monica Alba is reporting from Washington, D.C. What more can you tell us, Monica? Well, these are new details coming in to our team, Chris, along with my colleagues. 
Kristen Welker, Mike Memley, and Sarah Fitzpatrick. We have learned from sources familiar with the situation at the White House that Hunter Biden has been by his father's side ever since they were at Camp David this weekend as a family where they had some discussions about the president's potential path forward here and his reelection campaign. And that since he returned from Camp David last evening with his father, we understand that Hunter Biden has even joined some meetings and conversations that have taken place between the president and some of his most senior advisors and senior staff. And while we should note that it's not unusual for Hunter Biden to be at the White House, to be in the residence, to be attending certain White House events, which we have certainly seen time and time again over the last three and a half years where we have seen photos of him and where he has appeared in public, it is unusual, according to the people we spoke with, for him to be participating at this level. Yeah, so this is a really bad sign to me because it signals that maybe he's there because he's trying to shield Biden from information that might encourage him to do the right thing and withdraw since Hunter Biden doesn't want Biden to withdraw. You know, I don't know if an aide, you know, in particular might want to give Biden a particular poll showing that he's doing bad. Perhaps he can intervene and say, oh, is this a poll showing my dad is losing? I'll give that to him. Don't worry, wink, wink. And then just drop it in the paper shredder. I don't know. This is obviously supposition. We really don't know. But when Biden's inner circle has constructed a bubble that's impenetrable, I can't not expect the worst, especially when Hunter Biden has a lot to gain personally from his father staying in power, perhaps a commutation of his sentence. I don't know. You know, that might sound cynical, but NBC News reporter Ken Delaney tweets that Hunter Biden allegedly texted his father in 2019 saying, if you don't run, I'll never have a chance at redemption. Now, listen, I have no idea if that's actually true or not, but it is disgusting to see Hunter Biden get a a chance at redemption specifically because he's the president's son when other individuals they don't have that same chance at redemption now i say this because in 2021 biden's administration literally admitted to firing staffers for marijuana use yet hunter biden is allowed to attend meetings with the president because he won the lucky sperm club it is genuinely nauseating and now he's trying to convince his father to stay in the race because that would benefit him personally but he's apparently not alone because this is what all of the members of Biden's inner circle are doing. They're trying to convince him to stay in the race and, you know, tune out all of the noise. So the only way to subvert Biden's inner circle at this point is to just go around them and publicly call on him to withdraw because we don't know if he's going to get the negative reports in the polling showing that he very much should drop out. This is is what all elected Democrats have to do. They have to call on him publicly to drop out. They have to say it with their full chest and put their names on it. It's risky, I know, and their political careers could be snuffed out if they do call on him to resign, and he doesn't. But protecting democracy from Trump is going to require you to take risks. It's going to require some self-sacrifice. American democracy is more important than the career ambitions of elected Democrats. So in conclusion, things are only getting worse for Biden and they can't conceivably get better. But despite that, if he doesn't receive overwhelming pressure to withdraw, he's just not going to. So every single Democrat needs to be screaming from the rooftops as loud as they possibly can that he needs to retire. He needs to withdraw because the future of American democracy literally depends on them doing that at this point. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Tree, tree, tree. tree. <laughs> tree. They not like us. Tree. Tree. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? tree. <laughs>